What's up everyone, Matt again with the Maya Learning Channel. In my last video, I showed you how to use the new animation curve sculpting feature in Maya 2024 to sculpt animation, not unlike how you might sculpt a mesh for modeling. Today, I'm going to delve into modeling proper by showing you a couple of new enhancements aimed specifically at retopologization. Like before, I'm going to be showing you these in the form of interactive tutorials, which you can download in the link below. Don't forget to open these from the File Open menu inside of Maya. And definitely don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Now let's get to it! To start, let's look at the enhancements made to the retopologized node itself. Just as a quick refresher, this feature lets you redistribute all the edges of an object with a single click. Within the retopo node, you can adjust things like the face count target and regularity of faces, but even so, you won't always get desirable results. Maya 2024 now gives you more ways to control this end topology to make the end result more closely match with what you started with. The traditional method for this involved using hard versus soft edges. So first I start by softening all the edges on this bolt. Next, the tutorial will pre-select a bunch of edges for you. If I turn on wireframes, notice how each edge is on a loop I'd like to preserve. However, because this object is made up of tries and not quads, I can't double-click to select the loops. Instead, I can control right click and select by contiguous edges. This selects edges by angle rather than topology. Pretty handy in these cases. And now that my loops are selected, I can harden them, and then retopologize again. And then I can turn on Preserve Hard Edges. Now if I turn off the wireframe, you can see that the details of the bolt are much better preserved than before. And of course, you can still play with the other attributes to get a more desirable topology after that. But of course, this workflow was already available before 2024. What's new is the ability to preserve in other ways as well. So once again, if I retopologize this piston, the default result isn't great. See how the sharpness gets lost in a bunch of areas? This time, I'll go to the retopo node and preserve based on edge angle. This automatically preserves edge flows that intersect above a certain angle. And now you can see that, like the hard edges before, the sharper details come back again. I can even tweak the preservation angle to adjust the results even more. What's nice about this method is that I don't have to go in and manually harden edge loops by hand. The algorithm just goes in and evaluates the entire mesh for me. The only downside is that it can be a little slower than hard edges, especially on large or complex meshes. And the other thing to remember about the retopologize algorithms is that they may not, and actually probably won't, give you a perfect result off the bat but they're super useful for getting you 80, 85, 90% of the way there. Then you can just go in and fix little problems by hand. Once you're ready for that, it's never a bad idea to delete history on the object. This will greatly speed up the scene since it won't need to constantly recompute the retopologization. Just know that you'll lose the ability to go back to the original mesh, so either be sure you don't need it or make a copy before you do this. The next way to control edge flow is with Maya's component tag feature. This is a feature that tags individual components in Maya with metadata and is handled by retopologize very similar to hard and soft edges. You can assign component tags by selecting components on the model, then clicking the plus button here and giving them a name. But where this is most handy is when importing objects that may already have metadata attached to them whether because the tool used to create them assigned this metadata automatically, or because somebody else assigned the metadata for another use. In these cases, you can just reuse the existing tags to guide your new topology. What's also nice about this is that, unlike hard or soft edges, component tags are invisible on the original mesh. Finally, in Maya 2024, we can control edge flow via symmetry. So in the original version of Retopologize, there wasn't really a way to enforce symmetry other than selecting and preserving identical hard edges on both sides of a mesh, which was honestly kind of a pain. 
Now all you have to do is enable the symmetry option in the Retopo node, and voila, instant symmetry. So those are all the new retopologized features introduced in Maya 2024, and for a lot of use cases, they'll work out great. But what about cases when you need really fine control? Or cases when you're really down a complex sculpted model, say for a mobile game? In these cases, you may not want to rely on an algorithm to do this work. You might want to do it by hand. That's where another new feature comes into play, multi -make live. Make Live, of course, refers to the ability to make an object in the viewport the center of all snap operations. In the past, you could only have one live object at a time. But in Maya 2024, you can now select a bunch of objects, like these planets, and make them all live at once. Now you'll see that if I move this tree around, it snaps between the three planets. A list of currently live objects appears if I hover up here, or look in the status line down here. Now, this can be useful for some set dressing scenarios, but as is the theme of this video, the real power comes into play during retopologization. For example, if you want to downres a complex sculpted character made of multiple pieces, think armor or clothing, or in this case, different modular robot components, then a tool like this can suddenly be pretty handy. So in this example, I'll select these two parts of my robot and make them live. Then I'll select this partially completed low-res replica and turn on Quadra, which allows me to literally draw a polygon mesh one face at a time. So to use it, I'll click the mesh at each of these example spots to place dots. Notice how the dots stick to my live meshes. Compare that to if I turn the live meshes off for a second. Now if I attempt to draw a dot, it ends up inside the mesh, since I don't have any way to control the depth. Notice too that I can easily drag dots back and forth between each live mesh, and it transfers seamlessly without leaving the mesh surfaces. And now I can shift-click to generate faces from them that bridge both surfaces. Which you can see even more clearly if I isolate the mesh. So continuing to sort of trace my high-res mesh here, I can rebuild the entire head in low-res and apply a texture and bump map to it to use in my game. So that's enhancements all around to Maya's retopologization capability. I hope you download these two interactive tutorials and give them a try for yourself. And if you've got any thoughts about these new features or even the tutorials I built to show you them, be sure to leave a comment below or even in the tutorial itself. In the next video, I'll show you all about the new multi-skin cluster feature, which I'll use to build a quick facial rig with squash and stretch capability. You won't want to miss that one. Thank mm -hmm. you.